Ready to settle the debate on what's the best pad for fighting games or general gaming? Well, stay tuned because this video we're going to go over the Victrix Pro BFG and the Hori Fighting Commander Okta. Hang out with us. Welcome back Button Club members to a review video here on the channel. I hope you all are doing well and thank you so much for hanging out with us today. As you've seen in our previous videos, we did an unboxing on the Victrix Pro BFG controller. And we also did an unboxing of this, the Hori Fighting Commander Okta. And in today's video, I just kind of wanted to compare them together. They're both very, very different in certain aspects and also very, very much the same. First thing I wanna talk about is the Hori Fighting Commander Octa, okay? This pad comes in at $60. And if you want to check out my initial reactions to unboxing this guy and all of its features, please just check out the link in the description below. So we've had this in our hands for, I would say about a month, month and a half. I try and use it as often as possible, but I'm not a pad player, okay? Uh, I am a fight stick guy, but I was trying to do my best to get this into training mode, warm ups, and I wanted to give you guys a, a good review on these controllers, even though they're not what I normally use on the day to day for my fighting games. When it comes to this pad, like I said, coming in at $60, I think this is a great purchase for its money, okay? Uh, it does so many things well, okay? The directional pad is really awesome, very sensitive. I don't know, my review on this is short because I've only had about a month with it. Some of these things I know might not maybe last the test of time as much, but please check the comments in the other videos and in this one, because plenty of people, and I thank you for doing so, were chiming in on what they thought of these controllers together, okay? Um, so some people had mentioned that they had issues with the D-pad eventually on this controller and the shoulder buttons. But these were features that I really, really liked out the gate, okay? The D-pad is awesome. The analog stick is incredible. Very, very sensitive. And someone also mentioned in our comment section that they like to use this controller for shoot 'em ups okay? Which wasn't in my, my, my brain at all to use this for anything else. They also claim that they enjoyed being able to load this up into their computer and change the sensitivity of the left stick, which I thought was really, really awesome. And that is an, a feature that you can do with this. All the features on here between lock, touchpad, um, the accessibility to multiple PlayStation consoles and PC, this thing does a lot of things right, in, in my opinion. At the local every week, we encouraged our players to try these out to help give me some feedback on what they thought about the product. The number one thing people said about this is it's lightweight and it feels, I don't wanna say cheap, but it feels inexpensive or economy, we'll say, okay? Again, at the $60 price point, it's lightweight. Uh, if you are an angry gamer and you're getting upset in your online ranked matches, I, I don't think this will this will last a good wrenching on, personal opinion. The texture on the palm rest here is also a little slick. That was something I kind of mentioned in the beginning and the more and more we played on it, the more I found that to be accurate. You can kind of like slide in your hand a little bit, but otherwise for 60 bucks, this is, this is a great product. And if you're on the fence on which one of these to buy, you could absolutely start with this thing and feel like you got your money's worth. It's simple, you don't have to think a lot about its options because they aren't there basically. If you want to focus your, your brain dexterity on the game and not so much on the peripheral, this is the way to go. You don't have to worry about losing your cable at a tournament or it, you know disconnecting from the controller because it's completely hardwired in. And at $60, if something happened to it and you lost it or it was stolen, it would obviously be a bummer, but you're not missing out on that big investment, $60, it is what it is, right? So one of the other features that I like about this in comparison to the Victrix Pro BFG is the fact that we have our heavy punch and heavy kick here on the you know six button layout face buttons here. And then here these shoulder buttons, which would normally be uh, R1 and R2, are actually L1 and L2. 
Now that might seem a little bit like why would the left buttons be on the right side, but it's really nice because heavy punch and heavy kick are not repeated on this side and the hand that is controlling all of the fighting game actions now have access to drive impact and drive parry, which I think is really, really nice. And then these buttons here being L3 and R3, these are your setting buttons for training mode so you can record and play back the, uh, you know, the, the player two dummy and be able to work out those scenarios that you might be struggling with in your fighting game. I think that's like a really, really cool feature about it. These buttons are not repeated. This thing's just ready to go, 60 bucks. If you got 60 bucks in your pocket and you wanna take a chance on a new controller, this is the way to go in my opinion. If you're gonna buy a PlayStation 5 pad, shout outs to Jared Steamy Squid who just picked up another one for himself because he says he's switching. These are like 75 bucks. The build quality on these is great and feel really hefty, but if you are in touch with anything in the fighting game community, you know that everyone hates this D-pad and they have issues with certain buttons and this and that. So, you know, for the, for the price comparison there, I think those things are really, really solid. Um, this doesn't have a wireless feature, obviously, but that's like kind of the beauty. When you're done with your set, you unplug, you forget about it, you're ready to go, there's no dongle to lose, there's none of that. If I had to give this thing a grading, one out of five buttons, four fighting games we're talking about, strictly four fighting games in my personal opinion. Uh, I think this thing gets a four, four out of five. The pros of this controller outweigh the cons dramatically, okay? I enjoy using this thing. I think it's just really easy, simple. That's more or less all about this controller, okay? Now I'm gonna switch it up. Let's grab our Victrix Pro BFG and talk all about this guy. Now, as we mentioned in our unboxing video, this guy's gonna set you back three times the price as the Hori Fighting Commander Okta. This thing comes in at $180. But like we've said in other videos before, more money usually and should give more features. This thing checks off a lot of the same boxes as this guy when it comes to features. It's compatible on the same consoles, the, the lockout switch, the headphone jacks, all that. Where this controller really excels though is feeling satisfying in the hand. This thing has a much better weight, feels like a better build. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna get anywhere after a salty loss to try and crush this thing or twist it, mangle it. This thing is solid and super sturdy. On top of that, what I also think outweighs the uh, Hori Fighting Commander Okta is this right here. Textured rubber grip area right for your palms where they're resting on the game. It feels super solid. You're gripped in, locked in. So that, that feels incredibly different. Plus there's this really nice texture on that part of it too. So it keeps it from slipping in your hands. So this controller is also a little more on the ergonomic side. This feels more like a traditional controller compared to the unique feel of the Hori. So if you're used to something more like that and you want something that feels more like, like you haven't really made a big change, right? It feels really comfortable in the hands. This guy is definitely winning in that fashion. So like we mentioned with the Hori, the heavy kick and heavy punch button are not repeated. On here they are. When you have the six button layout for this Victrix, these shoulder buttons are doing the same exact thing as these buttons here. Let me show you. This is R1 and R2 up here, and so is this, R1 and R2 up here. So that means now when you're playing and you want access to drive impact and drive parry, you're doing that with your left hand, which is the hand that's doing all of your directional controlling. Some people might like that. They might like that it's repeated because maybe in a pinch they can go on like old reflex and hit these buttons instead. But for me, it's just kind of, it's, it's repeated. And I really like the feature of the Hori that these are the drive impact and drive parry buttons. Now you might say to yourself, well, how about remapping them in the uh, you know, character select screen? These are these buttons. So if you re remap them here, they're gonna be remapped here also, kind of defeating the purpose of that, okay? Uh, another thing that's not really used much for me personally or in fighting games are these guys right here, these extra 
buttons back here. When I first started playing with this controller, I found them to be a little, maybe slightly intrusive, okay? I found out how to shut them off. It's really quite easy. You just hold this button back here, and then you're able to select one at a time, shutting these buttons off. I thought maybe if I held that button, and pressed and hold both or all four, they would all desync, but you actually have to desync these all one at a time. Once these were shut off, I did find myself accidentally hitting them while playing. Although it didn't do anything in gameplay, it still kind of bothered me that I was like distracted by hitting another button. After a week or two, I completely forgot about it. I can't even remember the last time I felt like I've hit them and remembered it. So that was a, a, a plus when it comes to that. We also ended up changing the outer ring of the left stick here. We added the octagon gate to it so it matched the Hori. And I think this feature should be standard, not even on just a fighting game controller, but on all controllers, even the PlayStation pad itself. You're never guessing what is exactly up, a little to the left and right. You know every time once you've hit that direction and because of those little notches in the octagon gate, you're locked in, you're there. There's no more left than that left right there. And I think that that's a really, really cool feature that both of these have. And switching that out on this was actually really easy. The whole module came out, so did this piece. We just popped it out, put the new one in and it was ready to go. The biggest beauty of this controller is how module it is. If there's a part of this that you're not that big of a fan of, you just change it and it comes with those options also. You don't like the D-pad? There's two other options there. Are you wired and wished you were wireless? Well, it has that capability too. Proving the fact that, yes, more money is more options, but some people, uh, you know, they get frustrated with more options. Oh, I don't want to have to think about that. I don't want to have to think of which D-pad I like better or this and that. I just want to have a controller and ready to go. Then this guy might not be for you. More options might not be better for you in this case. This going along with against the, the Hori Fighting Okta, as far as a fighting game controller, it feels very similar, but its additional features help push it along. I'd probably give this a 4.5 out of the five buttons. Uh, for how it stands right now as a fighting game controller because of its extra options and because of its hefty weight and feel. You can be wired, wireless, change the D-pad, maybe you don't even need the six button layout, you just like the traditional, you can rock that too. The only other thing I will say about the six button layout, and you can see it right here, the space that's between here compared to how it is down here, I would kind of like these six buttons to feel more centered on that module. I do find that I have to go pretty low with my left thumb to get these extra buttons for grab and parry and things like that. And I end up finding myself kind of sticking more to mediums and heavies because of where my thumb naturally wants to sit. Where if this was moved a little bit more centered into the module, I think it would be ultimately really comfortable. That's kind of another reason why the Hori shines in that manner. Those six buttons are in like the perfect spot for where your hand is. And if you're getting lost with your thumb, it's only because of unfamiliarity, not for where you think it should be. I think this controller gets a five out of five if you're using it for everything that it offers to you, okay? If you plan on playing fighting games on this, or you wanna play a completely different game, the most time that I put into this controller, like I will say, I, I tried to get used to and comfortable with this controller, but since it's only for fighting games, that's the only time I could use it. I use this thing every day now, okay? This is the controller I'm using when I'm playing Mortal Kombat 1, when I'm playing my Pipe BMX Sandbox game. There's been so many more hours on this thing in comparison because of that bonus extra feature that is, uh, you know, you can apply it to any other game, which also goes into its price point as well. If you're looking for an all-around controller, something I can play my fighting games on, something I can play any other game on and know that I've got a high-end, awesome controller. This is the guy right here, okay? So with that being said, I think this controller is good at multiple things, fighting games and beyond. This Hori is wonderful strictly for fighting games. 
and that's it. All right, everyone, that's gonna put an end to this video. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I hope there's been enough information about both of these products to help you make a decision on which one you plan on purchasing. If you have any one of these, please leave in the comments below how you feel about them so people who are watching this video can also get your input. I wanna thank everyone that commented in all of our unboxing videos of these to help put perspective on this review video. And I also want you guys to check those videos out in the description box below. The links will be there. So you can watch my initial impressions and how they've held up here in this review video. Don't forget to also do all of the typical YouTube things, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. And if I can give you a quick peek into what we're also gonna be covering on this channel in the future, we have picked up the new Sanwa JLX joystick, which we will be covering shortly. I also wanna go over the Quamba gravity buttons. Oh man. And of course, we're gonna to have to do a review on our most recent unboxing, one of my most favorite things on the channel, the Victrix Pro Fight Stick. So stick around, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will catch you guys in the next. And don't forget, keep pressing those buttons.